In this video, we're going to look at how to create a counterbore, which is in the bottom of this part. So this was designed somewhere else. We need to flip it over to work on it because our, we have a vertical mill. So to do that, we're going to come down here to top plane, and I'm going to select the right side. That way we can rotate the part and get the bottom onto the top. Up here, we're going to go to transform and then rotate. I'm going to select the part and click OK. In this case, I'm going to select Move, which has already been selected, and I've already typed in 180. And that flips that block over. We can also grab this arrow and flip the block as well. I just like typing in the 180 over here because I find it a little quicker. I'm going to click OK. Once that's done, I'm going to go back, change my C plane back to top, and I should see top, top, top. I'm going to fit this to screen. Remember, that's a right click. I've already selected my machine. To do that, remember, you just click Machine. Go to mill and pick the mill that you're going to use in our class. In this case over here, I'm going to go to tool settings. I'm going to set up my tool settings for this part. Um, this menu opens up. I'm going to ignore everything all the way down here to where it says assign tool number sequentially and warn of duplicates. I'm also going to expand this bottom arrow and override my defaults with modal values for all three of my clearance, retract, and feed rate. If I hover on the left hand column, you will see that these open up. I need to go to my stock setup next. In my stock setup, we're just going to grab this because our stocks are already to size. I'm just going to say OK. Once I've grabbed that, I want to make sure that my origin is here. So I want to start at the beginning of X, the beginning of Y, and the beginning of Z. But you'll notice that doesn't put our block or our material superimposed over our part. The reason that's the case is because originally it was here, and we've moved it out to here, which moved these values. So change these values to zeros, and you will find that this will superimpose. Once that's completed, I'm going to click OK. So now that we've got our stock set up and our tool settings correct, we're not going to start machining this part. I'm going to go to Tool Paths and Drill. It's the simplest form that we can do. It gives us some directions on how to do this. For this operation, all we're going to do is grab this upper hole. Notice that my center mark tool is next to my cursor. I select that click OK. And there's a reason why I picked the bigger hole, not the little hole, which we'll see later. I'm going to select Drill. I'm going to grab my tool, and I'm going to go down here to my tool library. And remember, we can filter these out. So I'm going to start with a 3-8 spot drill. So I'm going to undepress that, go down here to my spot drill. And I know that my spot drills are 3-8. Remember, I've changed this from ignore to equal 0.375, where you could type in 3-8 there. It'll say spot drill 3-8 here. I'm going to click that, click OK. And you'll see that this populates here. Next, I'm going to ignore holder stock cut parameters. Um, notice that I have some choices here, which we'll go into later with a different path. I'm going to jump down here to linking parameters. And we're going to stick with everything being absolute. So we're going to fix this first. Once that's done, I'm going to change my clearance to two inches and only use it at the start and the end of operation. And you'll notice that the picture over here shows us what we're doing in each one of these things. Our retract, we're going to change to dot one. We don't need to jump up half an inch. <clears throat> top of our stock we know is already at zero because we set that in our stock parameters. And our depth, our depth is based on the drill bit we're going to use, but we have a 3.8 spot drill and we're only using 11 64 bit. So we need to do some math. What's cool about Mastercam is they've supplied us with, with this little calculator and we can type in our finished diameter. In this case we know it's 11 64ths. If I click another box it'll automatically populate and you'll notice this number just changed. I'm going to overwrite that which will change this number with this number, so let's change it. So I click OK here, and notice that gets populated. This, what this will do is make a dimple exactly deep enough to capture our 1164 drill bit. Once that's done, I'm going to click OK, and you will see what's happening here. What's also neat about um, Mastercam is if you click the little target symbol, the the um, the select tool, it'll show you all of everything that's happening. It'll show you retract. It'll actually show us where our clearance is. It'll show us our top of our stock. It'll show us depth with all these little planes. It's really awesome to see how this works. So that's a really neat function. I'm just going to click OK again to get out of that. Now, because we've selected the center of this hole, and that's also the center of that hole, we've spot drilled. We're going to drill all the way through. Instead of going through this whole process, again, we're only, only going to fix the things we want. So if I right click on this, copy it, and then right here, I right click and paste. I can paste this copy right here. It's the same exact path. All I need to do is change a couple things. So I'm going to go to parameters, go right back up here to tool path. Oops, tool path type. You'll see we're still in drill. I need to change my tool because I want to drill that hole now. So I'm going to click 
my library again. Filter out this time, I'm going to go to drill bits and not spot drills. So I've turned this off and turned this one on. I'm going to type in my 1164 drill bit. I'm going to click OK here. I'm then going to select it here. Click OK. And I like to select it here as well just to know that I've got it. Down here in my cut parameters, this is where we're going to change this. I mentioned this in the previous path. We're going to use a peck drill, which allows us to make incremental steps into the part. I'm going to stick with the defaults because it works really good for this particular drill bit and this path, so it's 100 thousandths per step. I'm going to ignore all this other stuff down to linking parameters. Notice this has already been done for us. The couple things we need to change is how deep we're going. If we forgot how deep we're going, we just click this little button here and go down here and say, hey, I want to be that deep. Next, I'm going to come down here to my tip comp. Now, what this is going to allow us to do is right now our tool, the tip of our bit drill bit, ends right here at the bottom of the part. We want to go all the way through. So tip comp will allow us to come through and punch through a little bit and have some sticking out. So we're going to turn this on. And notice this now became highlighted. It was grayed out before. And I like to go through an extra 100 thousandths just to make sure I'm all the way through. Our drill bits are 118 um, degrees on the point, so we don't have to worry about that. So now this is going to pop all the way through. And again, if I click on this, you will now see, if I zoom out, you will see our clearance, you'll see our retract, you'll see our top of our stock. If I zoom out a little more, you'll see the depth, and then you'll also see where our tip comp works. So that's really awesome. So we're just going to escape back to our, our screen here, and that's it for that. So now we've done is we've spot drilled and we've drilled. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So I come up here and grab my verify function. So I've selected all my operations and then selected verify. I'm just going to wait for this to load. Once this is loaded, we can actually watch this happen. So I'm just going to take my slider here once this loads. I'm going to bring this back so it slows it down a little bit. I'm going to click the arrow and there's my spot drill. And then you'll see that this goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And it'll peck drill that out for us all the way through. And if I zoom out a little bit and spin this down, you will see that the last peck will be drilling into air here. So it'll, it'll clear the part and it'll go all the way through and show us that it made it through the part. So there's that last peck right there. And then you can see that that cleared all the way through. So that's perfect. So we're going to close that out. Last thing we need to worry about is making sure that we get this whole counterboard. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to copy this again. Again, the reason we can copy this is because we selected the larger hole first. Oops, I need to undo that delete one of these. Shouldn't have selected both. Just select one and copy it. I selected both that time. So I'm going to come down here in my parameters. This time my tool path type is going to be helix bore. It makes like a, a, a spiral path or like a, a spiral staircase. And it's going to machine into our part. My tool this time, and I'm hoping this is going to work with a 316s end mill. So we're going to filter out our, our end mill or filter out our tools to an end mill. And we're going to make this 316 and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to select my 316 bit, click OK. And again, I like to select to make sure I have it. Down here in my cut parameters, I just want to turn off our leave stock on walls and leave stock on floor. I don't want to leave anything. I want to take it all away. My rough and finish pass, I'm going to ignore. My, I'm going to ignore all this other stuff all the way down to linking parameters. Again, we're going to turn on and only use this at the beginning and the end. Change this to a two. Make sure everything's absolute so we don't have to do any funky math on this particular activity. My retract again is going to be 0.2 or right around a quarter of an inch. I'm going to leave my feed plane at 100 thousandths above the stock. And my depth, again, I can use the target symbol to select the bottom of the hole. So anything in the bottom of the hole is fine. In this case, it's a quarter inch deep. Once that's done, I'm going to click OK. And you'll see that that spirals there. And what's really cool is if we watch, I'm just shutting all these off to save time. When I watch this, you're going to see this blow itself in here. It's going to make a little spiral into this part. So I've slowed it down. Hopefully we can see it. You'll see it starting to make its little spiral. It'll do it kind of quick. There it goes. And notice that's there because the previous operations have removed that. That was our drill path that we had before. One other thing to show you as we look at these parts, um, I want to go back to parameters for that counter bore. One thing in these cut parameters, I want to make sure this is on left so that we climb cut. It gives us a better finish. I hope this helps. And I hope you're able to do this. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.